And we're back, friends. Just a quick coffee break. And so um, let's continue. Right now, I'm going to, there's um, some exciting announcements that the mayor and some partners are gonna be making. I'd like to bring Mayor Michael Bloomberg back up. If we could, please. Yes, we can. Also, also joining us, um, also joining us on the stage is Mary Nichols. She's the chair of the California Air Resources Board, basically the state's top climate change official. Hi, Mary. Good morning. Thank you. And Will, Mar Will Marshall. He's the co-founder and chief executive of Planet, a San Francisco-based satellite imaging company. So what we have here is public, private, and philanthropic. And today you all are announcing um, a very big, new, and ambitious partnership. It is called Satellites for Climate Action. It's a new initiative that will use satellite imagery and technology to map out the impacts of greenhouse gases. Um, to begin, Mary, if you could, what is this all about? Well, we've been interested for a long time in how we can use the latest science and technology. California is a leader in those areas. We have a lot of homegrown talent. But what we want to do is to put it to work in a new way globally to help us understand what's actually happening at a very detailed level to our planet. We started off with a concern about methane because there's so much of it mm -hmm. being emitted from landfills and especially from oil and gas operations, wanting to understand if we could actually target where the leaks are in the system and figure out how to go after them. And if we can have real-time data, we would be able to act more quickly and to do a better job. And so this is an exciting but a very expensive undertaking and we need partners. What, Mayor, what I, I think what a lot of folks find interesting, will find interesting about this is that this new initiative isn't to clean the air or prevent m emissions from the ground, essentially. It's to measure the air. I'm saying this in a very basic way, of course. Thank you, everyone. But why invest there? What is intriguing about that versus putting your money into other emerging technologies? Well, uh, we have a saying in our foundation, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. First step, Albert Einstein once said if the end of the world was coming and he was asked to solve the problem, he would spend 95% of his time trying to figure out what the problem was, and then he'd only need 5% to solve <laughs> the problem. Uh, and this is a ways to find out what the problem is, where, when, how, and uh, we have a technology today of putting something up in, in a satellite way up in the air that c can do amazing things that uh, analysts and policymakers always wanted to be able to do and never could find out what's really going on. Will, can you help us understand what is satellite imagery from space going to show or tell us that people can't get otherwise, can't get right now? We have an expert. <laughs> I'll start with Will. Yeah, so at Planet, we've launched 150 satellites, uh, and they image the whole Earth's landmass each day. Uh, and that's to track changes across the planet to help us to take care of the planet. Um, and. Uh, it's the largest satellite fleet ever launched. It's quite a new system. And what that data enables us to do is enables policymakers to make smarter decisions day to day. So uh, what we're excited today to be talking about is uh, a few things that will tackle some of those key challenges. For example, measuring the on-off state of all the coal power plants around the world to make sure that they're decommissioning on time. Or, um, and we're working with the state of California tracking all the fires. And that's important for pollution as well as for um, uh, 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 the emergency response. And we are also investing in technologies that just in general measure the carbon economy. I mean, we at Planet have a, a quip, you can't fix what you can't see. It's very similar to <laughs> what Mike just said, that you can't. This is a good partnership <laughs> already. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> We've almost got the same byline. You can't manage what you can't measure. And so, you know, it just stands to reason that the more data you can have, the decision makers can make smarter decisions day to day. So, Mary, what is California going to do with this? Is, is, is the goal to, to call out bad actors when you, you... You can certainly use it, and we will make the data that we receive public. Uh, private okay. partners who join us may uh, be looking to get data that they can use for their own business purposes, and that will be uh, part, of the, uh, part of this whole uh, plan. But any data that we receive, we are going to be posting and helping people to interpret what's going on. You know, in the television world, you 
post pictures of fires. And you can send a camera up pretty far and they can get some pretty good pictures, but when the fire is actually blazing or when it's just getting started, you don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. And when it really starts to go, you can't get close to it because it's too dangerous. The satellite will be going around the Earth multiple times a day, sending back streams of data, and will be able to focus early on where the problems are arising. And this is what has the scientists at my agency in California so excited, because they feel that they will be able to raise their operations to a whole new level. Mayor, what's the end goal of this in your mind? I mean, how much are you planning, willing to invest in this? Well, it's a tool. Number one, uh, there's lots of ways of collecting information. This is one of them. And number two, you have to do something with the information. Yeah. We have a habit, unfortunately, of saying, OK, I'm going to come up with a system that looks to see what's going on, and that's all we have to do. And I think if you go back and look at, I can bring it back to my administration, a good example was, why did we drive crime down in New York City so low? It makes every other, almost every other city look like they're high crime areas just compared to New York. It was because we got the data and then we did something with it. We sent people to where the problems were to try to stop things or uh, fix things after the fact, if that was the case. Uh, but data is a tool, it's not an end. You want to use it to do something, and I think people keep forgetting that. Does the technology exist right now, or is there something new you need to develop to pull this off? Um, well, well, there's some technology that exists in space today right. with this fleet that images the whole Earth every day, and there's some new technologies that we need to, for example, uh, measure point source emissions better. And so it's a little bit of both. Um, but let me just also give a little bit of perspective here. Here we're in New York, mm -hmm. in the and, and um, at the UN you know, set this big set of challenges, the Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals. Um, and we've estimated that we can uh, measure about 13 of those 17 from space. And that's really important because we can have uniform measurement. The UN Environment Program last week came out with a, a study showing that of the sustainability-related goals, 23% we're on track, 9% we're behind, and a whopping 68% we don't know <laughs> where we're at. Hmm. And so there's a huge data emergency that we need to have uh, the data to be able to do something about it. It's not enough to just have the data, as Mike said. We have to have the data and then take action with it. But if we're not measuring 68% of the uh, sustainability-related goals, that's a big challenge. And so this is the technology that helps us in some of those areas, maybe two-thirds or so, to track the changes. Fascinating. Uh, Mary, it is no secret <coughs> if you've if you Google Mary Nichols and um, <laughs> right now, it's no secret that you have been at odds with the president um, over the climate um, very recently. You, California, you filed a lawsuit last week to fight his administration over California's vehicle emission standards. Um, now the administration is actually threatening to take away billions of dollars in highway funds from California, um, kind of wrapped up in all of this. And I, I do wonder, I see it written in headlines, and I kind of wanted to get your take. Do you view this as President Trump is at war with California over the climate? You know, uh, I cannot say that I think the president is at war with California, but I do think that we have challenged him in ways that uh, particularly some of the people who work for him uh, find offensive, and they're looking for ways that they can strike back and try to make us look bad. Um, it's also no secret that we have air quality problems in California, right. persistent air quality problems. We have done a great job, I would argue, over the years, going back to President Reagan in driving down emissions and improving public health, repeatedly working with the auto industry, not always with their support initially, but mm -hmm. over time they have become partners with us in building better cars, and now a whole new generation. I think cars. the country owes California a debt of gratitude because they have taken on these issues, they've done something about it, they've shown that it works, and we just don't have the political courage to follow them. But Mayor, when it comes to what we're talking about right here, and you mentioned it earlier, you this the President Trump has called climate change a hoax created by the Chinese. He often confuses climate with weather, weather patterns, um, and he pulled like the United in Alabama. Is that right? Yeah, Alabama. <laughs> if you brought a sharpie to this conversation, we are done. Um, <laughs> he also, in, of course, pulled the United States 
out of the Paris Climate Accord. With all of that in mind, do you have any hope of working, of, of working with the federal government on climate change? Do you see that, or are you sending a message here that you need to go around the federal government? Well, the private sector can do an awful lot. Uh, the federal government is not the only one that influences this, or the state governments, or the city governments. But we all have a role to play. Everybody that adds something makes the problem better. Everybody that doesn't add something is unfortunately having, giving us a missed opportunity to do something. But in and some ways, working against. I mean, look at what's happening. Well, let, let me phrase it this way. I think the president is badly informed. And I said yesterday at the United Nations, when he came in for a mm -hmm. cameo, uh, I said <laughs> that I was glad he was there, because if he listens to the discussion, it will help him formulate more intelligent uh, uh, climate policies. And look, the best thing that could happen is the president wakes up tomorrow morning and says, Eureka, I just discovered or I just found out or I wasn't told before, and does what we think is the right thing. That would be a great outcome. And, and I think your belief making, that would happen is? I, what I will not do is hope that it doesn't happen. Okay. And I think we have, of partisan reasons, done exactly that. Whether you agree with this president or don't, and I didn't support him, I didn't, as you know, think he was the right person for the job, but he is our president, and I think we should try to find some ways to change his mind, or if you can't change his mind, go around him. If he doesn't change, we still have an obligation to do things, but I think Planet's Technologies and Mary's uh, and her uh, uh, fellow uh, uh, officials in California have shown that we can do some of this, and that's what we should focus on. Well, thank you so much. Satellites for Climate okay. Action, there's much more to learn and see from it. Thank you all very, very going much. By right now. And they're watching us right now, just to make you feel all, oh, more, yeah. all the more comfortable. Thank you so much. When we come back, one more conversation on this very topic. We're going to have a special conversation with the president of Finland, who is, who is on the forefront of the tackling climate crisis. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.